What's good, Wage the World? It's your boy, Five Star in Vegas. I'm broadcasting live from a really beautiful Summerlin, Nevada today. It's gorgeous uh, in this great city of Las Vegas, man. I couldn't be happy to be here with you guys on the Wage the World. Please hit that like button before you do anything. If you're rocking with the Wage the World, of course, I'm always in here with my two co-hosts. Let's start with the YG of the show, man. You know, he's a young dude to run a casino sports book on the Las Vegas Strip. That's my boy, Casino Royale. Wow, what's that? I was on the milk cart to get off. That's the milk cart. Missy, we gonna see the folks looking for you, Casino. Hey, I'm about to start seeing the people docking at your door. You, for you, real. Casino, a young boy. He's still living the the, the, the good life, you know. Hey, you know. But look, I'll be on one his thing by Casino, hey, he definitely be on me too, <laughs> on me hard, hard. But one thing by Casino is Casino gonna put in the work, and Casino gonna make sure you know he make up for his time. So if you follow me on Twitter, you got your winner last night. Shout out to uh, Five Star. Yeah. I think oh. y'all had um Commander's first half. So First half, you, both, you, hit both, you hit both ways. Shout out to the wager, bro. Man, you know everybody went over here. You know, we moved. I'm excited about this weekend. Let's get some winners in. Five, five. Hey, it's so funny. They be so locked into the show. I think it's really, uh, you know, entertaining the people when they see me and you go with opposite sides on games because, yeah. you know, of course, people are kind of messed up with the new culture of the way that they do sport, sports shows due to debate now. It's how it's mm-hmm. debate. So people like to see you know a little antagony and stuff like that between us on that but it's really just for fun but the other day a guy shoots me a, a, a tweet and he's like you and Cino going against each other and I said man no we not because Cino has the money line and I took the points oh, the both, and the we both can win and we both can win they don't understand yeah, that we I'm like win. man we're not going against each other he's saying the full game I got to have but anyway we glad to have you back brother Always good to see you. And of course, we got the OG of the show. You already know, it's been with me since day one, man. The only Sacramento Kings fan that I still know. What's good, Spurs? How are you? Man, uh, since I know people be watching the show and, and they're not letting on, here's my plea to the NBA. Give us more of these one game slates. I told you right before we started the show, five star. I said, that's only one game. I don't need to do an NBA show. We canceled that. I took a great hike. Now my mind is refreshed. I am yeah. relaxed, and I'm excited to go on the weekend because uh, Sundays have been fun, but Saturdays have been money, so we got plenty of college football to break down today. Man, usually we would have my OG Curtis Schoon on in this spot, but he's doing a lot of work with uh, redoing the whole city of Detroit. He's doing some really powerful things, so shout out to Curtis Schoon forever, man. He's got love over here on the wager world, but is it really fight week anyway? I don't know. No, oh my it, god, bro. Is it much to talk about? See, though, you more into the combat sports than both of us. What do you think about this uh, exhibition tonight between Tyson and Paul? And this is funny that it's an exhibition because you can bet on it, right? And yeah. they're saying this is going to be the most bet fight in boxing history. Like, this is nuts. Like, wait, what? This? Yes, yes, MGM actually said that this is going to be. Was- Yes, MGM came out and said that. that this is the most accurate spread. Damn, you have to understand. Since y'all just giving away money, let like, me, I'm going to create a, a website for the way. Go look it up, Brent. Just donate. Go look, go look it up. Like, this is literally, this is. Did a, people not watch that Roy Jones thing? He could have he could have taken him out. This is a huge fight. Mike Tyson is on one right now. Um, I think he might go rogue and, you know, flip the script. Because it's all entertainment, dude. This That's what I'm thinking, too, man. We're going to watch this on Netflix, you guys. This is not paid. It's free on Netflix. Straight entertainment. Yeah. I don't know if people realize this. Mike Tyson, he did an interview with a little girl talking about oh, I don't know if you guys see that. Or not. I Everybody that. seen that with C, though. That's the interview oh, seen around the oh world. Oh, my God, y'all. This, is, this fight, to be honest. I thought it was yesterday. I was um I was looking for it. I couldn't find it. I'm like, oh damn, it's Thursday night football. I'm tripping. It's Friday, but I'm really looking forward to it. You know, I got to grow up on Mike Tyson. A lot of the kids they never got to see Iron Mike fight, so of course they want to see it. All they see is the highlights of him knocking people out. Everyone wants to see Jake Paul get put on the ground. If <laughs> if it was up, I to didn't me, like what he did. That little monkey little move like i peaked that man like we saw what you did jake paul like, yes we we definitely we seen that it's, it's on, out man. man it's all fixed i think it's all entertainment no way in hell jake paul should be minus 250 minus 260 against mike tyson um i just definitely be enjoying it i'll be watching it tonight i think it's definitely that's all i'm doing it's, yeah, no it's gonna be hell i'm man. getting involved i'm just there. praying that mike tyson goes rogue i got a mike tyson story to the real fast like, please I let us hear keep showing a little bit but it's got it's one week I've got baked on on sports. I lost really bad. This one of the first years I was living here, but I'm still. I've ever since we've been here, we've had a house in the Sumlin area, right? And down the street from there 
it's a TD Ameritrade, right? Across from Red Rock, as you know, you know, across from Red Rock, it's a TD Ameritrade. Now, you know, that's for stocks, and there's not a lot of black dudes who have accounts with them, but I have an account with them, right? Mm -hmm. So, you know how I dress, guys. Like, hey, right now, I got, like, a black hoodie, yeah, you chill. know, a black cap on, and I'm standing for the TD Ameritrade, and I'm ticked off because I got washed by the books this week, and I need to get, like, 2500 out of this account because I need some money, right? And they're telling me, like, they haven't sent the money yet, but I sold the stock on Friday. So I'm on the phone with the guys Monday morning. I'm like going off. I'm cussing. White people passing me by. They're not saying nothing. They're just going about their day. Mike Tyson pulls up in an Escalade, right? He stops. He looks at me. <laughs> I look at him. I stand on the phone. And you know how I am seen up, right? I'm cussing up the store. He go part. I'm still outside talking on the phone. He, you can tell he just came from training because he has on like some torn up, like jogging, like cut off maybe sweat shirt and some joggers on. And he's walking into TD Ameritrade. He says, excuse me, brother, uh, uh, do you have any business over here? <laughs> See, though, I put down the phone. I looked at him. I said, what did you say? He was like, I I'm saying, I'm saying, but are you in the right area? I said, man, I'm on the phone with my, my stock broker, man. Get what is wrong with you, man? I got back on the phone, right? He said, oh, oh pardon me, brother. Walked into the TD Ameritrade, right? I get the stuff handled to call my wife. I'm like, you don't believe what Mike Tyson just did to me? You know, like, <laughs> he kind of just racially profiled me. Like, right. <laughs> you ain't the right spot. kind of just racially profiled me, man. So, <laughs> so she just like, you being the crazy stuff. I was like, maybe so. Hang up the phone, I'm walking back into the building to grab my money now they fixed everything. He's back in his truck, now he stops. He said, hey brother, <laughs> dropped his window. He's like, didn't mean to offend you. <laughs> 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 he said, I just don't see a lot of us over here. I was like, man, I live right here in Sutherland, man. I just said that, and he was like, well, I'm Mike Tyson, man. I was like, good to meet you, man. I turned around and walked off because I was so sick. <laughs> Like, get the hell away from me. Bro, I got my own problems I'm dealing with right now. Yeah. Like, what is wrong with you? But that's what's through. But my homeboy, Marcellus, and Mike Tyson are real close. They, like, best friends type. So I know some other good things about him. But this day, maybe because I was dressed, he thought that I was maybe trying to rob someone <laughs> at TD Ameritrade. And he was trying to protect the neighborhood of Summerlin. So <laughs> shout out to Mike Tyson. Oh, shout out Tyson, man. PTSD tonight. All right, man. So... Another thing, you missed last show. So, you know, we were talking about how they was biting a lot of stuff that we're doing over here. You made a great point in the thread. You said, we, you know, I'm on ESPN, so people know me from being in that little world because of me being on ESPN Houston, even though it's an affiliate, it's still the brand. Yes, most definitely. So, you know, we come from the, the music industry. I just thought about this. Stephen A and his team over at ESPN probably doing what record labels do. Exactly. And they're combing the internet and they're getting all of the best young talent and people who are making different types of takes and have different opinions and to use it to keep create, you know, for themselves to keep, keep from being stale. Mm -hmm. We saw, I'm not going to name no artist, but he just was in a big beef with another artist. <laughs> he used to do it all the time. You know, like bring these guys to the studio, let them hang with them, pick up their whole style and what the new kids are on. And run with it. So maybe we're getting that's happening to us. That also happens in the fashion designer world. You see it all the time, man. They start some, you know, new trends in the neighborhood. Next thing you know, Gucci's doing it, Louis Vuitton's doing it. So it's not surprising at all. But what do you think about the fact that now, yesterday, Stephen A. Smith had the nerve to say that he believes that it's going to be a package deal <laughs> with. Coach Prime and Shador to the Cowboys, and that's Jerry Jones' dream scenario, and he's been setting up all year to do it. Have you heard that before somewhere, Cino? No, I haven't heard that nowhere. <laughs> it's crazy that you say that now, bro. I actually was querying on Twitter, right? And now everybody's talking about that. And if you go back and look at the uh, episode of The Waging World, I think our time stamp is before any of these things were said anywhere else in the media and again i tell this to a lot of people um last season we were actually affiliates of espn we were part of that branch like we were yeah. espn radio we were there yeah. so yeah. um you are very very foolish if you don't think these guys are listening to the information we give um when betters are hitting at 70 percent rates 
they are definitely watching. They are definitely looking. I don't care who it is. The gambling community is only so big, like for real, for real, and the waging world as well. No, we might be underground, but the big dogs are checking for the underdogs. Trust me. Spread. What do you think about Stephen A. Smith <laughs> and his audacity to now take this story, put legs on it as if it's his own? <laughs> <laughs> He got to do something. Ain't nobody watching them shows anymore. You know, right. at first, at first, it was kind of novel the idea that they would debate. Now it's like, man, I'm just waking up. I don't want to hear people yelling at each other like that, right? I listen yeah. to some jazz music. I'll listen to a nice, relaxed podcast. So I think, I think they really have problems. And um, not to go on too much of a tangent, but but these cable networks are in trouble. Let's even look at, at what we just talked about with that fight tonight. And I, I was thinking about starting to make sense when Sino said it's the biggest handle because you don't got to buy a pay per view. Oh, you're right. You don't have to spend right. eighty bucks. Right. So if you just spend that eighty bucks and put <laughs> right. it on the fight. It's what you're used to. Yeah. Uh, I think everything's going to streaming. I was listening this morning. Prime going to try and get League Pass next year. It's going to be another blow. I wonder how much longer I'm going to have this YouTube TV. Because uh, the only thing I really have for now is college football. And once that goes, I mean, yeah, it's crazy. So uh, I'm not I'm not surprised they're doing this. And like you said, they've been doing this in music for years. You, you know, I always say it's spread that we do this, you know, for the underground and for the underdogs. And my favorite artist, anyone who knows me, is Currency. Everyone knows yeah, I exactly. love listening to Currency. If you ride with me ever in the car, both of you guys have. I'm going to have Currency. Maybe a little Larry June, but mostly Currency. And the reason why... I like currency so much is because he's in tune with the culture. He's respected by all the big dogs in the culture, but his music is so artistic. A lot of people don't even want to listen to it. It's only for the nerds. It's for people who want to break down and understand the concepts. And those that do that, they're able to, you know, use it and put it toward life and have some positive outcomes. And I try to do the same thing with the way we were with our show. We all take pride in being able to really discuss these games and come from a real point of view as respected betters and sharks man where we're telling you how to attack these games in a way that's just not football but in a way for you to make some money man and we're going to stay true to it we're never going to change up you don't have to worry about that on the way the world man hey it's us versus the machine hit that like button right now let's get to the pass spread all right we got plenty to talk about and the first game on the docket is last night's thursday night football game uh, man, uh, the dream season for Jaden Daniels uh, hit a little bit of a speed bump, right? It's not over yet, uh, but we see that there's a reason this team was in fourth place and drafted second overall, and the Eagles have been Super Bowl contenders for the last five years. Uh, the addition of Saquon Barkley continues to pay dividends. Uh, you see him behind that, that offensive line, and you realize, hey, football is a team sport. You can be great individually all you want but you need the full team moving that way. And you see him behind a real offensive line, unbelievable there. So uh, Philadelphia Eagles get the win. They move into first place in the NFC East. What did you see in that one, Five Star? Man, anyone that watches enough of my work know that I really don't play totals, but the numbers and lines from this lean toward the over. So I did have a heavy lean that way, but my group did not play. We only made two plays and that was first half on uh, the Commanders plus three and the Commanders first half plus 158. And the reason being, as we've said so many times, if you watch the show, if you watch anywhere that I do any of my work, I've talked about the Eagles have not scored in the first quarter all season. They still haven't. And for some reason, they start really slow, and they're a really good second-half team. You bet them second half if you're going to bet the Eagles. First half, you fade them because you already are going to be up after the first quarter because they just don't score in the first quarter. And we saw that again in this one as um, Dan Quinn comes out with a really good plan defensively. Great job. Like I said, they have a no-name defense over there. And Dan Quinn still makes those boys play really hard. They hustle to the ball. Uh, as I always say, I only know the linebacker, and that's Bobby Wagner because he was Seattle. The rest of those kids, I don't even know their names, and they play really well for him. I think their future is just unbelievably bright. Jaden Daniels is about to hit that part of the season that's like a kind of cliff with him being a young quarterback. They played 12 games <laughs> max his whole life. Then you have a big break in the bowl games. Now it's grown man football. As you saw last night, he didn't look as quick and fast as he usually looks, right? Because he's hurt. Mm. He's hurt. So he's not. they're not putting out how bad he's hurt, but he's really hurt. Because I could see in the open field how he was moving. He, he didn't look like himself. So 
he'll tough it out and put some weight on in the offseason. Hopefully it doesn't affect his quickness the way that it affected Lamar's. As far as the Eagles, as long as, you know, A.J. Brown plays, they're going to be a good team. They have a really dynamic offense, really good leader quarterback. Saquon Barkley might be the MVP uh, of the league. He's a really awesome player, man, having a phenomenal year uh, in Philadelphia. And I'm glad he's with an organization that appreciates him. Now, the only problem is we all know is Sirian, can he get out the way and allow – uh, the team to do what it needs to do. He made some good coordinator highs. His big fans, you know, defense is starting to shape and perform, and they're looking really good. But I think the Eagles are going to be around, man. I would not be surprised if they get to the Super Bowl. Uh, one thing I want to touch on, the point you made on why maybe the Eagles start slow, and I think it's one of the edges we have as, you know, you know, Sino and I both run numbers, and you really like to watch these games. And one thing I always say about the analytics community when they want you to pass every down and the EPA is so much higher for a pass than a run, what you don't realize is the amount of fatigue a defensive line and linebackers can accrue by having the offensive lineman move forward and blocking every time. So they probably start slow, but what are they doing? If it was a video game, that, that energy counter on that defense is going down, down, down. Yeah. Now in the second half, Saquon's able to get loose, and those guys don't have the same juice to get after the passer. So Hurts is sitting back there throwing darts. So it's just another way where you can figure out EPAs and yards per attempt and all this. Uh, but the simple fact is, at the end of the day, this game is won in the trenches, and the Eagles do wear you down. Sino, what did you see in that game? Damn, five star broke it down good. You also the trenches is where it all started. Um, big number sixty eight. Um. I, they were showing him all over the screen last night, the offensive line for the uh, Philadelphia Eagles. He was doing what he had to do to make sure Jalen was protected. And like I said, man, this uh, commander's team, they're still young. They're susceptible to turnover prone, man. I put that on Twitter yesterday. Um, whenever uh, Reed, he got that uh, interception, I was like, oh, yeah, it's over with for these guys. Took the fight out of him. And Daniels had also hurt his hand in that game yesterday. Um, when I seen that, um, he went to the tent. They tried to, you know, stitch him up or glue him up, whatever they did, like that of that nature. Um, I was like, he doesn't have it all. And, and Five Star said it best. He's hurt. Um, I seen he tried to make a run when they went for it on the fourth down. He didn't get nowhere. That's not nothing like Jay Daniels that we know of. If you watch his game, um, but young team still rookie quarterback. Philadelphia, like I said, man, they found their rhythm. They click. Well, that is six straight now. Super Bowl contender. The only people that's in that way, I think, is the Detroit Lions. <clears throat> All right, uh, we will see how that goes. See if someone in the NFC West can sneak in there. Uh, both Arizona and, and San Francisco maybe finding some form at the right time but uh right now it seems like those are the two top teams in the nfc uh another game you wanted to talk about five star was the clippers who took on the rockets the other night um well hey you left out my game the bulls the bulls one? covered against the knicks i apologize we can do that one first that's we fine i got nothing to say about it except we got the win uh talk to me about what you saw in the okay. clippers and the rockets Clippers first half, we gave that out. We were able to cash that one. Rockets seem like they're starting to form in the shape a little bit. Of course, his coach, you know, Udoka, he's a fabulous coach, just a really good coach, and he's going to get the best out of his team. Seems like their second team, in my opinion, is better than the first team. Uh, they call them the Terror Brothers, and those are my two favorite guys. I think me and Spread have been on these two for a while, and that's our men Thompson and Tar East, and we've both really – uh, like those guys and their potential from the day that they got drafted to the Rockets organization. Man, it was a sweat at the end. <laughs> the Clippers were down like 16, put in the bench. They almost walked it down. It's down five men in. My two-year-old in here sweating a storm because I'm like, I need four, son. They got to win five, more five points. And they just kept playing around, and I thought that we was going to lose that one. But they ended up, they blocked a couple shots right at the cup, and we sneak it out and ends up a uh, uh, eight point victory for the Rockets. Time to trade Sagoon and Jabari Smith for Giannis if it's available. Hmm. Goon is overrated, man. I know y'all like him. I know you want to, you know, pump him up and like how he throws little passes and he got a little handle. He don't play enough defense, man, and he's undersized as a center. His plus minus was minus eighteen in this game, and I think that. Coach Udoke is finding out that, you know, they can play without him in the game, you know. So, um, I don't know, man. If they can trade and go get Giannis, Giannis still has some good years left, here, left, man. He just needs to be motivated. He needs a new start. He's tired of Milwaukee. He doesn't like it there. 
was Houston. If you're from Houston like us, so you know, you know, it's a real, real strong Nigerian culture in Houston. A lot of, you know, powerful, successful Nigerian people inside of Houston. And at the end of the day, he's Greek, but his culture is Nigerian. You know, he's a Nigerian. So I think that it fits perfectly. So if the Rockets have a chance to get the guy that I hate, probably second or third most in the NBA, I'll suddenly become a fan because – <laughs> I love to see Giannis with Udoka playing defense and running up and down that court dunking on stuff, man. So, leave the young boys out there. I even keep Van Fleet now because Van Fleet is, with playing with Giannis. He's that bitch with guard that's going to hit them threes when he needs to in the playoffs. So, keep that. But, man, it's time I'll move Sagoon right now. I know that breaks your heart, Spread. I know you're a big Sagoon guy. I am. And the only thing I would say about that is <laughs> at least he's getting better on defense. Uh, when he came in as a rookie, he was uh, arguably the worst room protector in the league. Um, yeah. He's below average now, which <laughs> doesn't sound good, but it's an improvement. Um, so we'll see where that goes. But um, I'm all for getting Giannis out of Milwaukee. It's it's front office malpractice what they've done there. Um, proven they don't know ball. Look, look like a bunch of 18-year-olds trading a, a guy, a two-way but player. Go ahead. Before we throw it to see no spread, real before it's just turn to talk about the Rockets, just real quick, I'm glad that you said that about Milwaukee. I want to ask you something, spread, because you you're a books guy, kind of. You like you like to bet them off yeah, in the do. last couple of years, and especially uh, when their former coach was there, who's now doing pretty well with Phoenix, right? <laughs> now it yeah. seems like they ran off a championship coach for Giannis, traded a championship player in Drew Holiday for Giannis. For Dame, did he not have anything to do with that? Sino's shaking his head. Sino, do you have some intel? <laughs> <laughs> that, it don't make sense. Why would you do something like that of that nature? He was right? he was all excited when they traded Drew Holiday, calling Damon Lillard on the phone and saying he, that they needed a closer now. And if we know that he ran off Buzz, come on, he ran off Coach Buzz. You don't think so, Spread? I don't really know, but I know that it was a mistake, and that's where you need a strong front office to tell a player, and, and, and hey, CC New York Jets, we run the show, <laughs> you don't, right? <laughs> because you let these guys – look at look at the way it's – like when LeBron demanded Russell Westbrook and KD demanded Bradley Beal. Sometimes these guys don't know basketball, like building a team. They see what they see on the court. You know, and they love the athleticism. They go, God, I can't stay in front of that guy. But they don't think about team building and, and where the money goes. Otherwise, yeah, I mean, once they traded for Dame and got rid of Holiday, they got rid of the identity of that team. I, so. I call those two-man robberies. That's just like Devontae Adams and <laughs> and A-Rod over there. That's just two homies that we got to lick. Let's hit this lick. You, know, you hold the window up and I'm going to crawl in. Oh, my God. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm going to be the lookout while you come out with the money. That's the type of situation. Both of those words, it's just some money grab. What do you think about that Rockets Clippers guys? You know, uh, five star. When I was listening to the show, I seen uh, you was on Rockets first half, right? I yeah. gave out Rockets full game. Um, in this situation, Rockets always whipped the Clippers ass, they was like six and no against the spread. I kept running my numbers too, and it was saying the Rockets would win by like nine or ten, all right? So uh -huh. everything was looking good, and the game started off slow. The Rockets were actually trailing. Clippers defense is nothing. They're nothing without a Kawhi Leonard. They have to make some adjustments. So yeah. I'm looking at the game. I'm like, man, what are we going to do? I had the Rockets money line with the Lakers, and uh, we also had the Rockets minus four. Uh, they came through. Jalen Green, um, he got that contract. He don't supposed to do. The Rockets bench, they play a huge factor in that team. They do everything that they have to do. They keep impacting. Um, They're going to be all right, I believe. So a shout out to the Houston Rockets, man. Yes, sir. And we're talking about Giannis. I think Giannis is going to go to the state, to be honest. I think he's going to play with Curry. Curry's doing too good over there not to have, you know, a team. Like he who he got, but him buddy here, that's about it. Like what what what, what do they have to get Giannis? Like the Rockets have some pieces. I don't they were, think that Golden State has anything that anybody wants for Giannis. You know, like what well, nobody don't want Wiggins. Nah, you know. Right. If they were yeah, I don't know. I think their hope would be they would get the draft picks and just hope the team fell off. You know, yeah. be like like potentially and it's for Drew Holiday, but that pick that Milwaukee sent in New Orleans this year might be pretty good. <laughs> I feel like the Rockets had the biggest bargain the chips. It's now the pin. I would on. think I would think you're right because they got a lot of depth and they got some of their picks back from Brooklyn. So, but what I, from what I was seeing though, it's between the Rockets, the Warriors, and the Thunder. Those top three teams. That's where he, he'll be going. Oh my God, Thunder has some pieces too. They might yeah. be seeing. Yeah, Ooh, would they have to come off check? 
from what I've been reading, that's what I'm just telling you guys what happened. But it's one of those three come out shit. Are they I'm not shits in the deal. Uh, in the let's see, in the the Thunder Deer. Yeah, are they the, the package that they're saying whatever reporting that could happen is you shit know involved in it? It's gotta you know, be you right. Know, no, they're not giving away shit. Nah. Well, who they giving away? You know, they're not giving a away whole bunch, a whole bunch of uh, first round draft picks. That's oh man, is. the Rockets better go grab him. Stop playing. Yeah. A whole bunch of uh, first round draft picks. Rockets and better go grab Giannis, man. Stop. Well, uh, with, look right here. They say uh, the Rockets gonna give up to Byron Smith, Stephen Adams, Dylan Brooks, uh, Ree Shepherd, and a whole. Whole lot of drink. Dra- dra- <laughs> <laughs> we'll see you. Best of luck, guys. <laughs> hey, and, and real, and real, real quick. Um, with Golden State, they will give up uh, Andrew Wiggins, Jonathan uh, Kaminga, uh, DeAnthony Melton, and a whole bunch of draft picks. So yeah. that's on the table, man. Giannis can go to either one of these three teams, and if he goes to Houston, it's gonna shift the market big time. It'll shift the market. It'll shift it because you got Udoka, who's a defensive genius, working with Giannis, where he can put him in different. Ways to protect that rim. Oh my goodness! Oh, Giannis, in, Giannis in the H. Oh yeah. my people don't. Want, man, yeah, it'll go up. <laughs> All right, Spray. What we got next? All right, one other NBA game on the docket. Uh, the Memphis Grizzlies fell, but they got the cover uh, against the Los Angeles Lakers. I'll, I'll be honest. I didn't bet that game. I didn't have a lot of eyes on it. I had something else going on at that game, uh, a night game that I had money on that I ended up watching instead. Um, nice did you watch the Grizzlies here. and the Lakers? Not one second. What about you, Cino? Yeah, I, I didn't did. watch that one. I didn't. I lost. I had the Lakers minus seven. I lost. <laughs> along with money lined with the Rockets. What happened? Uh, right at the end, they gave it up, fixed stuff, players hitting shots that they're not supposed to hit, and that's all that happened. Um, the Lakers were up. They were up, I think, by what, like 10, 11 or something of that nature. I don't know how these players do it, man. In the NBA, they could have one minute left, and they start fouling, shooting these goddamn threes, and before you know it, they're down by two. And yeah. I turned it off. Once they started to come, like, I'm just no way I can win. They had, like, 20-some seconds left in the clock. Mm, I turned it off. I didn't even finish watching the game. But, of course, the LeBron James, uh, Ja Morant thing, that's always something to look up to. Um, it's fun. I like the heart that Ja has against this team. He's not scared. Um, be on the lookout for the Grizzlies. And then the Lakers, um, have they came back down to reality spread? <sighs> it's tough for me to say. <laughs> I mean, they look really good. They look really good at home, and they're not too good on the road. Yeah. And the, with the style of play they have, that shouldn't be an issue for the team. Um, because when they're playing well, they're the, they're really good on defense. And defense usually travels. So, uh, I, I, I think they'll be okay. Uh, the, I mean, with the way the West is turning out right now with all these injuries, they stay healthy. They're going to be live here. I mean, we see Phoenix getting weaker. KD's out. Mm-hmm. Uh, OKC just lost Chet. Uh, Kyrie didn't play for Dallas last night, and they lost four straight. Uh, of course, that's an important team. Golden State's doing well, but they're healthy. Let's see. I mean, they ain't going to stay healthy for 82 games. Let's see what happens yeah. to that team uh, right. when they miss a couple of those pieces. So, um, I, yeah, I, I think the Lakers are okay, and they got the win, and I think that's all that really matters to them. You're right, but they struggled. LeBron's never cared about covering spreads. No, of course not. He works, but they didn't cover at home. They struggled against, you know, uh, John Morant. <laughs> He wasn't even there. His presence wasn't there. Yeah, but that Grizzlies team without Jaw isn't as bad. If you look at, if you just run numbers, they almost the same team. I know Jaw's excited and everything. Yeah, I mm-hmm. cashed on that too. Remember, I gave out over twelve and a half spread on Pippen on that game. He yeah, almost yeah, he, had like, he had like fifteen or sixteen. I just know Jack yeah. Jackson had went off in that game. He damn had thirty. Yeah, so that one was easy. When we also got, uh, if you guys watched the Wednesday show, you got the first half on Akron and North Illinois. Over 23 with me. Unfortunately, we did not cash Ohio with Eastern Michigan, man. Late. They just couldn't get it done. That quarterback, Snyder, that transferred from Buffalo is complete ass. And I, I did not know that he was back starting because they had been playing another guy the last couple of games. And man, he's horrible. He turned the ball over twice right before the half. Really, Ohio should have money lined this game, but unfortunately, take the L on that one. And bad beat, bad break, bad handicap. Just a bad, bad beat on that one. All right, man, let's jump to the present spread. All right. The next up on our docket is UCLA. They're catching four and a half in Washington on Friday night. Man, Washington, uh, what a fall from grace after being in the championship last year. Uh, I can't get it done at all. Of course, they lost a lot. Uh, They lost their quarterback, they lost their coach, and they lost about three wide receivers to the NFL. Um, So Washington not doing too well this year. 
uh, UCLA still kind of trying to find their footing. They're about like the 10th most popular sports team in the Los Angeles area. Uh, <laughs> what are your thoughts there in, in that game, Five Star? Well, as you said, not a good year for Washington. But, I mean, shit, it wasn't a good year for Michigan either, the team that won a national championship that they played against. They're both in the same type of rut. It's because they were senior-led teams and had coaches who both – left to go get the bag and you know when that happens you're gonna have to rebuild so they're struggling this year but they made a bad decision with the quarterback that they chose they chose the right coach because you guys know how much I, I like Jed Fish we rolled Arizona last year and won a lot of money with the Wildcats so this year UCLA is that team very similar to what that Arizona team had going on where all of a sudden I seen a switch hit and a confidence about their team um as I said, wrong quarterback for Washington. I'm going to fade him every time. I'm not a Will Rogers guy at all. I don't think that Will Rogers is a guy that you can trust. He was benched uh, in the last game that they played uh, for DeMond Williams. Watch him because he is a dual threat quarterback. So if he gets some playing time, he can um, maybe give you like, a couple issues. But as far as in um, Washington as a whole, their offense doesn't scare me. Their defense is really good against the pass, but UCLA is starting to run the ball really well. Deshaun Foster is the head coach. You know, he's a former running back. Eric Benham is their OC. He's a former running back. They're finally finding their, you know, rhythm in that run game. Really strong defensive line. One of the few teams you're going to ever see run for 200 yards on Iowa. They dominated them in the trenches, and I kind of told people before that game that physicality uh, would be the key to the win for UCLA. And they showed that they're one of the most physical teams in America. They're six uh, and one against the spread on their last seven away games and six and one against the spread as a whole overall. They had some tough, tough early games, man. They played Indiana, LSU, Oregon, Penn State, Minnesota. All of those games prepared them um, to be ready for this moment right now where they're going to try to make a bowl game. Tough wins at Nebraska and at Rutgers. Give me UCLA tonight plus the four. I would not be surprised if they win money line at Washington. Sino, I already bet this. Are you joining us? When Five Star nah. gave it to me before the show, I bet it. Are you are you joining us too? Again, I'm gonna stop this game right here because I'm a guy turnovers, man. Turnovers kill everything. And uh Ethan Garbers, he that's a near lock for at least one turnover. If you go look at all his past games, every game he didn't throw an interception or turn the ball over in some way of nature. And Washington always find a way to win at home, like uh, in conference play. They always, I don't know. And the numbers saying that UCLA definitely has a shot. It's going to be a close game. In these situations, Ceno not about to rake his brain. I just followed the guru on this one and lean UCLA with, <laughs> with those guys. And if I had to play, I'm money line Washington, but I stay away. I'll stay away from me. Mm -mm. All right. We have an idea from that. I feel like if you're going to money line, I'd money line UCLA. The reason is now your juice is too high. You're in a game where you know that either team has an opportunity to win. The great thing about betting sports is like flipping a coin. It's heads or tails. Either way, it's going to be a win or a loss. So why would you pay minus 200 in juice with a team that could easily lose over paying, you know, $100 to win plus 180 on a team that could win? Because you can always get your money back live. So that's my approach when it comes to betting that. If I'm going to flip a, uh, a coin, I'm never going to pay juice. All right. Uh, the next game I want to talk to you about, the Houston Cougars traveling to Arizona to take on the Wildcats. And, uh, you know, Arizona's got some – they do one thing right in that state. They don't They don't follow daylight savings. I wish we didn't have to do that either. Uh, what are your thoughts here uh, when Houston actually switches time zones now to take on the uh, Wildcats? Man, my – lean on Wednesday on this game was Houston. Now it's too much money coming in on, on them and the Cougars aren't that good of a team. I do like Chris at quarterback. I do think that Willie Fritz is starting to get um, his, you know, his, his type of football being played by his team, but it's just, I don't know, man. This is a tricky game for me. I'll probably wait and bet it live because if Arizona decides to play and decides that they want to win, they can win this game. It is a home game. They are a more talented team. I don't know if we see a better North for feeder because lately he's not been playing well. He's been really inaccurate. Tatario McMillan has been playing well. And I expect a, a lot more from those two guys. I expect the both of them to be, you know, playing all-American type football. There's something that's going on with Britt Brennan over there. I don't know what it is. But until then, I can't bet the Wildcats. So I still would lean 
of course, towards Houston. But it's not an official play until I see how the market shifts. And when I do, I'll make a tweet about it. Sino, are you getting involved or are you waiting too on the uh, Houston Cougars versus Arizona? I feel the same exact way. Line line is one and a half. That's a very, very sharp line. The market's in touch with the So I just stay away. We still have a little time for that game. All right. Uh, let's see. So this now we're moving to Saturday. And Texas is taking on Arkansas. Yep. Minus 13. How are you approaching this one? This is an old Southwest Conference rival from back in the game. They used to play every year, you know, and it was a big border war thing uh, back in the day. But, you know, now things have changed in Texas and the SEC and they're joining Arkansas, who's been in the SEC a really long time. I can't trust Arkansas, man. You know, like they're too Jekyll and Hyde. They play really well offensively some games, and then sometimes they can't move the ball. Sometimes the defense looks, looks like it's decent, and then sometimes they can't stop a nosebleed. So that inconsistency means I would not be on that side. <laughs> um, I'd probably be looking maybe Texas first half, but I'll um, I'll fall back and wait till Saturday morning to see how everything kind of shakes out. But I do lean Texas first half on this one. Uh, and whatever the total is, I, it probably goes under it, I would think, because I think Arkansas is going to have a difficult time kind of scoring on that Texas defense. Uh, Taylor Green just isn't consistent enough in the past game, and his athleticism isn't going to look so spectacular against the type of speed on the Longhorns defense. So uh, I would lean that. I'm not going to bet it. I don't bet totals, but just off my numbers, that's what I would see. But I definitely like Texas first half. What are you thinking here, Sino? Man, Texas full game. This should be a blowout. We got the uh, ninth best passing attack in the country. Facing a, what, 129th ranked pass defense. They gave up 500 uh, plus yards last game. Texas should ride these guys, man. Official play from Sino. Texas minus 13. All right. Sino's on the Longhorns uh, to get that one done. <clears throat> Next game, we got the Utah Utes. Uh, head to Colorado to take on the Buffaloes. Colorado laying double digits here. Is that too many points, five-star? Well, I don't know. It seems like Colorado is a cover machine of late. They're 7-2 against the spread. The thing that's most beautiful about betting the Colorado game is even when the public has been with them, they've overcome it, man. Now they've covered seven straight games, man. Um, something happened with that defensive line and offensive line. People talked to all of that mess about Shador calling out his offensive line, but how have they played since then? It seemed like it worked out pretty well to me. Like, oh, you shouldn't do that. Throw your guys under the bus. That double standards bullshit. You know, and then another guy does it, and he's just being a leader. <laughs> ah, this media, media, media. But anyway, you can't stop success, man. The Colorado's been really successful. You can't stop talent. And they have it all over the field offensively, man. And now that that defensive line has his ears back. People forget Coach Prime is a defensive coach first and foremost. I don't think people remember that. Like, his side of the ball is defense, and he's a really good defensive mind. Like, the thing that made Coach Prime so good as a player was his ability to study film. He's a film junkie. So, I think that we see a really good game by Colorado. One thing to watch that I will admit, last week I had BYU and won a miracle because they called a BS – uh, defensive hole <laughs> against uh, Utah on fourth down from like their own goal line and <laughs> I was able to steal that game on the last second field goal by BYU but they did not deserve to win that game I'm gonna just be honest with you Utah really played better than them in that game but Utah has a new quarterback that they let play he's a kid he's a freshman I think they were trying to hold him so he could uh, keep his um Red shirt rights. I think they can play four games or something like that, and they the red shirt stays in place. His name is Brandon Rose, and that kid is okay. You know, like he's a, he's a decent quarterback. And what's made them struggle for so long is they don't have anyone to throw the ball ever since Cam Rising got hurt. So we know they're going to try to run the ball, but Colorado's been one of the better run defenses in the whole country. Man, they've been really really stout uh, defensively against the run. I want to say that their defense is, what is it? No, they're only allowing right now 150 yards a game on the ground, and that's pretty good. Um, can the defense 
a Utah win on the line because they're going to have to win on the line to slow down Shadow on that offense. I, it's a sit back, wait and see game for me. I'd lean that Colorado continues to roll. It's an early game, man. They're playing at 10 a.m. because the Fox wanted to make sure that they got them in that morning slot where we usually we see Ohio State. So it's a big game, super <laughs> early. So, yeah, you know that's on the team they show is Ohio State. But Colorado's <laughs> going to play right there, man. And so we'll see how it go. But I, I'm very interested to see can they cover this game. I'll be looking as a fan. But if I can wait live and get like a minus six, I'll probably jump in on that. Sino, are you going to play this game pre-flop? And uh, are you disappointed to not be able to see Ohio State on your TV right when you wake up on Saturday morning? Oh, my God. <laughs> Hell no. Nah, I like the new way. Like I said, the paradigm shift is here. It's time for a change, man. But the Buffalo, what, they three wins away from clinching the Big 12 championship spot? And they gone back home with a supporting crowd. They've been blowing stuff out. Um, in Utah, they're bringing it back. Uh, what, Isaac Wilson? He coming back and... After the poor performance he had against Houston. Oh, he, Isaac Wilson going to start? Yeah, he's starting. Yeah, he's starting. Oh, if he's starting, then lay the points, y'all. Yeah, <laughs> Isaac done, Wilson starts I late done. the 11. He's starting. He coming back. And again, turnovers. Oh. That's why, you know, I'm a turnover guy. Yeah. I like the buffs. And yeah, uh, hopefully, late hopefully, 11. I didn't know that. I'm yeah. glad you said this, you know. Nah, yeah, he's coming back. Um, He he played trash against Houston. Shout out to Houston. Um, And I don't, this buffs defense. They're where they're supposed to be. Utah got a lot of turnover problems. You know, that defense is there, but Shador is a whole different animal. Um, Colorado right here, that's definitely who I'm leaning. Hopefully, we can get a better number. If it goes down to 11, 10 and a half, some of that nature, we definitely on uh, the buffs. But uh, if you're in the raw group, I might give that out a free play, man. Colorado somewhere, but I like them. They should capitalize on uh, Utah's turnover. And, you know, Wilson, he's on struggle to cover the spread. Yeah. Let's head over to the ACC, uh, Clemson going to travel to take on Pitt. How do you see the Panthers doing in this one, Five Star? See, you know, while I'm looking, going over this, find out if Eli Holstein is playing in this game for me. Pittsburgh right. and Clemson. Because that's what this whole, I mean, my whole handicap on this game is based on that. If he doesn't play, I don't want any parts of Pitt because of the similar situation we just talked about with Utah guys. I seen Brandon Rose. You guys know how I am about quarterbacks. I can see the guys who can handle it and who can't. Brandon Rose is is a much better player than Isaac Wilson. But Isaac Wilson, you know, his brother went there and was drafted in the NFL, and I'm sure his family got a lot of pull to BYU. So if Ceno says he's starting, then we land the points because he's not him. Isaac Wilson is going to be afraid against that Colorado pass rush. And kind of similar in this game, man, if Yarnell is the quarterback for Pitt, I want no part of it because he's going uh, to all over. He's yeah, Eli play. Hosting, Eli Hosting is questionable. So they they keep it so hid in college. Football. Yeah, it's so it went up to eleven and a half to make you think that Eli Hosting isn't playing. I got a twelve. Yes, oh take the twelve spread. You got to take, take it because not. you. The reason I say take it is because we can buy out if something changes, right? What if mm -hmm. Hosting ends up playing that morning and they go to nine? Because he's worth about two and a half, three points. So, uh, Yarnell, you don't want him. We, <laughs> I'm telling you, you don't want him. You, we'll have to have an amazing performance by that pit defense to, to, you know, win with him as the quarterback. Just because he, when the passing game comes, he's going to sail it on guys. And safeties get a lot of interceptions on him. And Clemson is good at turning people over. They've always been good at that. And they have a lot of motivation in this game to play now because – with Miami losing to Georgia Tech, now Clemson is tied with Miami for only having one loss. And, you know, the other side who's winning is SMU. Who would ever thought that? You remember mm -hmm. early in the year I was telling you guys about Brett Lashley could coach and that Kevin Jennings out of Oak Cliff was a really good quarterback, went to Carter High School, and now he's the starting quarterback, replaces Preston Stone, and SMU is first year in ACC, hasn't lost a game. The offense looks unstoppable. So they're 5-0 and on one side. They seem to be headed towards the championship unless they get upset. And then now on the other side, it's either between Clemson or Miami. So we know that Dabo going to have the defense ready to go. He can't really say the offenses because he doesn't have a lot of playmakers on the offense. And Clay, Kate Klubnik is not that guy, man. He He's not that guy. So I expect this one to be a low-scoring affair, really tough game. And you got to take the points in a situation like this. But as I said, it's not an official play for me as long as Holstein is out. If Yarnell is the quarterback, I'm buying out. 
All right. LSU disappointed us last week. One of the few losses on a card just chock full of winners. Now they travel to Florida. Uh, how do you see them uh, taking on the Gators? How we Break that one down so you know I'll go after you. Yeah, I say uh, LSU or Florida's taking a little money, so you know it's down to three and a half for me offshore. Uh, where did it start at? Was it at four? Four, yeah. No, how LSU, um, they coming off a defeat, man. How they respond to this five star? Like, uh, are they out of the out of the playoffs? Off of because of that loss they just had? I think so. Uh, like I don't, I really don't know, man. I'm disappointed in the way they perform. Um, like it definitely affected the playoffs if if I go back and look at it. Uh, Nismar played the game he needed to. Um, this season just been tough for him. What eleven uh, interceptions? What he threw twenty one touchdowns. I don't know, man. This Tiger team, they was just a big, big letdown. There's really not much I can say about them because the gate is down, but they still fighting. Like they still got a shot, and we lost to Bama. I really thought we was gonna win that game, and they got embarrassed. It was Bama came out there and shined on that issue. I, I was just gonna say, I, I know uh, you enjoy listening to Colin Coward, and it sounds like he enjoys listening to you because. <laughs> <laughs> Turned it on yesterday, and he wants Brian Kelly out of there too. And I said, oh, hmm. Hmm. I, "I swear, we just mentioned this yesterday on our show. We just <laughs> talked about it, and it's crazy because Jason McIntyre definitely comes over here and gets plays, and you no, know, we, you know, put out bets and stuff because he's retweeted a couple of things that I'd done, gave me some like props for my read on Cam Ward early, but." This depends on DJ Lagaway play. If DJ Lagaway plays, Florida's gonna money line LSU. <laughs> I'm telling you, if DJ Lagaway is the quarterback, Florida's gonna win this game. And they said that he worked out on Monday. So it's a chance that he might play. So this game for me is based on that. I feel like LSU and the Saints are not to be trusted right now. Even though the Saints had that company game, the NFL made sure they won and you know, <laughs> young way played like a young hoe. You know, it happened. So that's all good and done. But for the most part, both of those teams just aren't the, the teams right now to be betting on and putting your money behind, man. They, they, you don't want to risk your money on LSU right now. So, as I said, if I played anything on this game, it would be Florida plus four pending DJ Lagaway. So two games straight, man, where it's all about quarterback. But in my handicap, it's all about head coach, quarterback, defense. And, and there's a reason that uh, Jake Paul's fighting tonight and not tomorrow night because the real main event of Saturday is Tennessee taking on Georgia. <laughs> Tino, I want to start with you on not this yet. one. I, I can talk about this. <laughs> I'm so hurt about that LSU team, y'all, because, man, it's so I had so much expectations for that team, dude. And we're not even going to make the college playoffs, bro. <laughs> That's just sad. If we get Boy, man. <laughs> you believed in us, my. I told you that before the yeah, season. Yeah, you started. did, man. And if we get money line by FSU this weekend, we're really out of there. But let's move on to this game right here, uh, Tennessee and Georgia. What you would say, Britt? Uh, I just, I'm surprised at how many points Tennessee's catching. Um, uh, what are your thoughts going into this game? Georgia, Georgia desperately, they need the win. Just to get the playoff and stay in this house. But do they need to win by 10? I mean, that's a lot yeah, of points for a I Tennessee understand. team that's played hey. really well. Yes, and that's the books are making. They have to make a statement. They have to show that we are still that team. They can't go win by a field goal of seven points. You can't because it's going to be a close game, and you're going into Tennessee again. It's hard to win on the road. You can't. Yeah. And I, I don't. Shout out to Carson Beck. We riding Carson Beck this game. We're just going to keep. Oh going. Lord, look, <laughs> that's a lot of points. Five star. The line looked too funny for me. It looks way, way too funny. Way too funny. And like I said, Georgia needs to win. I think they do it by two or more touchdowns. Mm. All right, so Cena's laying it. I think it's a lot of points for a, a really solid Tennessee team playing against uh, what we've seen is an inconsistent Georgia team this year. Didn't Tennessee beat Bam? Yeah. All right. So why is Tennessee playing against Georgia and they getting 10 points at home? That's my point. <laughs> Thank because you. The, only because the quarterback <laughs> is out. Five stars. All right. The now quarterback five. for Tennessee is out. We know That's that. We know why. And big brother, we know that. And you're a quarterback guy. And you still going to rely on this guy with 10 points? Are you still going to trust on him with, with 10 points? Well, I'm researching right now a little bit more into the backup because they hadn't said if Ian Mavia wasn't playing or not at first. You know, like it wasn't for sure yet. So they say it's a kid, Gaston Moore. He hasn't got much playing time. But regardless of what, I know that Josh Heupel knows how to coach offense. So he'll figure out some type of way. Tennessee has some good running backs. And things like that. There's just a lot of points. I know Georgia's dominated Tennessee 
over the years. Tennessee's been playing really well of late, especially on the defensive side of the ball. And so I just can't trust all of a sudden for Carson Beck to learn how to play football again. And he's been throwing interceptions left and right. Tennessee, their defense isn't one to, you know, to, to be taken lightly. And You're right. You know, They're ranked number five in the nation. They're ranked number five, bro. They they third in yards per play. They only give it up 4.2 yards. And we know that Georgia. Points, bro. <laughs> George, I'm telling you why. Because they one, they know people are going to think like you that George is going to dominate and need this game because they're familiar with the normal Georgia brand. But it's a lot going on in that locker room, so, you know. It's a lot. You got a kid on their team celebrating with the other team. When you set up, you you just lost. Your team lost, and you um feel happy you guys lost. What the hell's going on in your locker room? Yeah, y'all lost by 18. Shit. <laughs> right, they quit. Carson Beck yeah. sucks. Like, stop it. Like, he, he sucks. Stop trying to save him and act like, you know, he's a, a good player. He's not a good player right now, man. I'll probably be on Tennessee first half on this game. I think that Josh Hyper, you know how I am first half. Ever. I think Josh Hyper is going to come out and figure out a way to keep it close. And George is usually a second half team anyway. So I think that Tennessee comes out with a good game plan, slow down that running attack, just like the great point that spread just made about offensive linemen if it was a veto game that was a great analogy spread that if their energy levels were showing it wears down after a while from just leaning on them leaning on them and i think tennessee might wear down and they do they might end up losing by 10 but we ain't gonna give it a shot i'm going tennessee first half just because i trust josh heifel to come up with a really good game plan early even though they have a young quarterback that'll be in the game but i also like tennessee's defense against carson Beck. Yeah, I'm, I mean, my final point is, and I know you guys know college way more than me. You know the players way more than me. But I'm just looking at, at my odd screen, right? Tennessee's catching 10 on a 46 and a half. Hmm. Look at some other of these 10 point spreads. Like North Carolina's laying 11, but the total 64. Just seems like a pretty low total for 10 points. But we'll see. Yeah, uh, I guess I'm wrong. Colorado's laying 10 and a half on a 44 and a half. But the book uh, seems like a lot of points for a game with a low total. Yeah, and they're telling you Tennessee's not gonna score. Like, yeah, not. that's what they're saying. But that's what yeah, Georgia might not score either. Look at yeah, but it's defense. All Tennessee need is one touchdown. You guys go to cover that spread. They get a touchdown in the field goal. Georgia ass in trouble. Simple as that. Uh, they ain't get that in the first half. Second <laughs> half, they're gonna be through. They probably. I, I wouldn't be surprised if Tennessee win at halftime. All right, we'll see how that game turns out. It's a big referendum and. Uh, Tennessee's got a chance to make the 12 team playoff if they get this win, right? Yeah, for sure. They do. Yeah, so yeah. They're, they're gonna be fired up. That's gonna be a fun game, and I think that's why uh Jake Paul's fighting tonight. I think too many people like uh like me would be like, I think I'm gonna watch the real sport. Um, but let's move to uh Sunday because we have a bunch of great games. There's some bad ones too, but in each time slot, there's a prime time main event game, and the first one is the Baltimore Ravens traveling to Pittsburgh to take on the Steelers. This is a tough game for me, Five Star. You know that of the last five years, I've been making a lot of money. You bet Tomlin is a home dog. You don't even think about it. But I'm thinking about it here because if there's any team that has the potential to win by margin against this current Steelers team, it is uh, it is this version of the Baltimore Ravens. But they had to be a better version because Lamar's never covered a spread uh, against Mike Tomlin uh, in his career. Uh, Tomlin 4-0 against the spread, uh, taking on Lamar Jackson so far. Um, If I were to play it, I'd be on the Steelers, but I think it's kind of treacherous here. What do you think of Five Star? Yeah, I'll wait till closer to the game, but I definitely probably play the Steelers strictly because Tomlin just gave Lamar Jackson that kiss of death. He knows exactly what he's doing. He's a sharp guy. (laughs) He gave him all those compliments when they said that stuff about Jaden Daniels. And he's about to try to make them have his worst game of the season. And they very might well pull it off. As you know, Tomlin owns um, John Harbaugh. Like, he, he just does. You know, he 7-3 against them in the last 10. They've won now 7-1 uh, in the last 8. So, why would I take the Ravens? I don't care how good they've been looking offensively they scored 10 points the last two times that they played the Steelers defense it's something that the Steelers have figured out about slowing down Lamar 
they haven't given the recipe to anyone else in the league. And I'm sure um, that they're going to hold on to it. But you have two different forces going here because you got the Steelers, who, as I said, are 7-1 against the Ravens uh, since 2020. And then you got the Ravens who covered their past eight road games on extended risk. So it's a couple things, man. You know the Ravens are going to be probably really fired up for this game because they know how bad the Steelers always beat them. But do they have the defense that's stout enough to get a really, you know, growing and, you know, getting better offense in the Steelers? The Steelers' offense is really finding its way under Russell Wilson and his confidence is building more and more and more and more. And people forget this Steelers a Super Bowl winning quarterback. <laughs> he never forgot how to play. I told you guys last year in Denver he was still good. We saw him pull out a couple miracle victories for Broncos last year, and Sean Payne was pissed he won, you know. So um, I, I think that these Steelers are hard to deal with. They've covered four straight home divisional games, man, and they've covered by a margin of uh, plus 13.9. So they're beating ass when you pull up in those yellow tiles out there and waving. I know the public going to be on the Steelers, but, man, I got to be a huckleberry. I'm going with, with Tom the money line on this one. I think I think the money will be even. I've heard a lot of uh, love yeah. for the Ravens here, and if you run numbers, um, it's going to tell you to take Baltimore off, off the strength of their offensive explosion mm -hmm. here. If you take right. Pittsburgh, it's more just off the ATS trends and just knowing how these division games go. Sino, you know, where are you landing on this one? Um, y'all couldn't have said it better. Like as professional betters in a divisional game, a home underdog, like you gotta take the dog, man. And I told you guys uh, last show. Uh, whenever the commanders played the Steelers, Russell Wilson was going to show Jay Daniels. He was going to be brother, man. Russell Wilson there, man. Again, he always wanted to play the game of football. He loves it. He just wants to be comfortable in where he wants to be. And now you can see that under Mike. This is a whole different team. Again, you're hitting it here first on the waging rail. Don't be surprised if the goddamn Pittsburgh Steelers sneak their way into the Super Bowl some way, somehow. Bob Star just gave you guys a great play. This is an official play from Sino. Plus three, Pittsburgh Steelers. Um, I sprinkle a little bit on the money line, too. I think they're going to upset the Ravens. Five Star, we touched on this a little bit on Friday, but we can dive into it a little bit more. And I'm talking about Caleb Williams, uh, whose Chicago Bears will be hosting uh, the Green Bay Packers. Packers actually 10-0 and against the spread, their last 10 against Chicago. This obviously goes back to Aaron Rodgers, but they've had a lot of success in this stadium. Uh, I want to hear a breakdown of this game. And, and just in case anyone missed the Wednesday show, your thoughts on Caleb Williams. I'm, I When I see a quarterback struggling to get through his progressions, make reads, hold on the ball too long, that doesn't really bother me. He's a rookie. What really bothers me is that his teammates don't seem to be supporting him. Um, DJ Moore has all but said he doesn't like the guy and doesn't want to play with him. And uh, watch when he gets sacked. None of the offensive linemen seem to care at all. It reminds me of that year uh, with Derek Carr and the Raiders when he pissed off his offensive linemen. And it just didn't seem, you know, they out there trying, but, you know, they're not giving 100%, probably closer to 90, 95% here. Uh, on that football field. What are your thoughts on this Packers game, and uh, what does Caleb Williams need to do to become a leader in that locker room? You guys that have been following me for a long time and watching the show know that it's only a few people in sports betting or just discussing sports and breaking down football that I trust, and one of them is Greg Cosell. And Greg Cosell, he always sees the game just like me with these quarterbacks. He's one of the guys that I really listen to and like his film breakdown. And he said the same thing I've been saying before Caleb Williams came to the NFL, that he created too many sacks by holding the ball too long and trying to play hero ball. Hmm. That He's a really good passer from the pocket, but he doesn't like being in the pocket. He has, and he doesn't see stuff quick. He doesn't anticipate. And he's, he took the ball way too fast and takes off. So, on top of that, he's small. <laughs> I, he just had a really good hype machine behind him, you know, and people believed in him. He got in that L.A. market, and he started believing a lot of things about himself. How stupid does he look right now with <laughs> the thing that they were talking about, that he wants to own a percentage of the team that drafted him? Like, <laughs> you're, you're one of the worst quarterbacks in the league, my dude. So, Pub is going to be all over Green Bay, but so am I. You know I'm a low-key cheese here, especially when it comes to bidding. <laughs> Matt LaFleur is coming off a loss where they did not look good offensively against uh, Detroit. 
Detroit handled them really bad. But, you know, just like anything in fights, it's always about the matchup. They never play well against Detroit. Detroit has been winning at Green Bay three, four years now. You know who they play really good against? <laughs> the Chicago Bears. It's a perfect get-right game. They're coming off of a bye. They're 10-0 and 0 against the spread against the Bears in the last 10 and have not lost a game against them. I don't trust Caleb Williams. I'm going to be on Green Bay first half on this one. Um, I think that Jordan Love comes out throwing it and, and looking really well off of uh, a bye week and a time to get some rest. And I also take Green Bay money line probably for the game. I don't know if that five and a half will land, but I can say that they're 10 and 0 <laughs> against the spread against the Bears in the last 10 times they faced them. Sino, what do you think here? And uh, man, I like Caleb a lot as a talent. We've seen some, some really excellent plays from him. But boy, if you can't be a leader, that. You, you can kind of not be liked in the locker room as a running back, wide receiver, defensive end. As a quarterback leadership position, uh, Caleb's got to figure out how to get his teammates behind him because it doesn't it seems like that's one of his big issues right now. What are you thinking in this game? Uh, for the teammates to be saying they want to start a backup <laughs> instead of Caleb Williams. Like, that wasn't very good. I mean, yeah, the that's guy. Not, yeah, that's not. <laughs> that, that tells us right there. It's not like Joe Flacco sitting there with the Super Bowl ring as the backup, right? <laughs> Right, I'm like, God damn, that tells us everything we need to know, man. This Bears team, um, it's the Bears. Like again, Caleb Williams, he's just over there. Um, he's just caught up in that organization. I don't think nothing's good coming out of the Bears no time soon. Um, they outstanding in the red zone. That's about the only thing they have a good defense, man. Um, how how we got down take the Bears at some points? We got to take Jordan Love. It's only right. Um, so I'm with five star this one, man. First half, we come out with a uh, the Green Bay Packers. Books might do something else. That five is a fishy number also in sports betting. That's just weird. Yeah, the fishy. They yeah, don't trust them. I yeah, they could. put money on the pack because they might win by yeah. four or five. At the That's what I was going to say, four or five. And the Taylor Williams get a little backdoor touchdown. And go there you go. I was just a, yeah. I was about to say that. They might actually yeah. be down by like four or something, and they might yeah. give Caleb Williams a drive to win the game. And if he wins yeah. the game, oh, he did this. But nah, um, first half, five stars, very, very smart guy. Yeah. And like he said, the Packers dominated this in recent, uh, recent years, this this history, so I don't know why it's, it shouldn't be five. So, uh, yeah, I lean Green Bay first half. Yeah, I'm not surprised that it's five. Um, number seems about right to me, but uh, I'll still take Green Bay until that streak ends. Streak right. can only end once, but uh, it can keep rolling for a while. Uh, let's talk about the Atlanta Falcons who are heading uh, to Denver to take on Sean Payton and the Broncos. The Broncos have been a team that's definitely benefited from the fourth place schedule. They look really good against some of the weaker teams. And then, you know, they, they kind of struggle, especially if we saw it in Baltimore two weeks ago uh, against the better teams in the NFL. So I see this game as a referendum on the Atlanta Falcons. If the Atlanta Falcons really uh, want to make noise in the playoffs, uh, because they're probably not going to be at home other than the first game, they're going to have to be able to go outdoors. They're going to have to travel. And they're going to have to start getting some pressure on the quarterback. I mean, uh, it's one of the worst pass rushes in the league. And it's really too bad because they have an excellent secondary play, but they just make those guys cover for so long. Um, Denver Broncos at home, lane two, five star. Uh, it's tough, man, but I like the Broncos here. Uh, I don't know if I trust the Falcons outdoors. And at the end of the day, uh, I think I would just take whoever was at home in this matchup. This game was Atlanta and it was, you know, Falcons minus two, which is what I think it would be. Uh, I'd be on the Falcons for that one. But because it's outdoors in Denver, I think the Broncos have a huge advantage. Uh, I'm going to take the Broncos in this one. What are your thoughts? I'll be with you on this side. This is an official play for me. I'm going to play the Broncos. I think that they got a lot of confidence last week, even though they lost their game to Kansas City. Yep. Them knowing that they could go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Super Bowl champions is really big. Also a thing to keep an eye on the Falcons. Um, they've lost every game in which they failed to score 22 points. They're not going to get to 22 points, I don't think, against this uh, Broncos defense. Um, this Broncos defense is number one in the league in defensive yards allowed per play, man. They're only allowing five yards per play, and they're the fifth overall defense. Also, an another thing to keep an eye on, the Falcons are 2-6 and six against the spread in their past eight games with a total under 45 points. Because we know that at the end of the day, the Broncos are going to muck it up. They're going to play ugly. They're going to get physical. And it's an outdoor game. Also, Sean Payton doesn't like the Falcons. He's in the Saints. He's been a Saints coach forever. It's naturally 
and bred in him from all of those years competing against the Falcons, uh, that he wants to beat those guys. Also, another thing to keep an eye on for this one, Bo Nix is really improving. Weeks one through four, his completion percentage was 42.9%. That number has spiked to 65% since then. I like the Broncos in this one. Full game, though. Let's go Broncos, full game, minus two and money line. Yeah, Sino, not surprised to see a young quarterback improve under the tutelage of Sean Payton. What are your thoughts on this one? Just exactly everything five stars say, man. Sean Payton got something against this team. Um, the Broncos, the block field goal, they would have won that game against the Chiefs. Like, they confidence there. They are with, for vengeance. Um, the Falcons just lost to the goddamn New Orleans Saints. Be for real. They're not about to go into Denver and win this game in this type of weather. Nah. All right. Uh, the Seattle Seahawks are taking on the San Francisco 49ers. Um, since Russell Wilson left, the Seahawks have not beat uh, the 49ers, and uh, they failed to cover at home against San Francisco earlier this year on Thursday Night Football. Now they run it back in San Francisco. San Francisco starting to get healthy, but uh, I don't know if McCaffrey's going to be the same guy he was last year, uh, even until next year. Sometimes those injuries uh, do take a while to come back from. Uh, big news in the Bay Area, of course, is the 49ers extending uh, their top cornerback, uh, Lenore. Um, so congratulations to him. He's definitely earned it uh, with his solid play. Uh, six and a half, usually a lot in a division game, five star. But once again, uh, this 49ers team seems to have the Seahawks number uh, since Russell Wilson left. How are you approaching this one? Man, I'm not fading uh, the 49ers in this spot, even though I don't think that they cover. I'm not going to play this game. You know, I'll just probably watch it. It's a game that Seattle really needs. They've lost two straight games. Um, they've had a week off to kind of get healthy. DK Metcalf is coming back. We know we're going to see the best out of him. Uh, if anything on this game, um, only thing that I could see myself maybe uh, betting at all is that uh, my guy Walker gets in the end zone for a touchdown. Kenneth Walker, the third, I think he scores a touchdown. So that's the only way I would look. It's too close, and you know I'm not a big Brock Purdy guy because you don't know if he's going to get out there and throw a bunch of interceptions or he's going to look good because this is one of those teams that he's played well against. He's shown up against Seattle several times before, so I wouldn't want to uh, fade him in this one because he has confidence when he sees that Seattle jersey. But McCaffrey, he might not be the same guy this year or going forward. Before that Bucks game last week, I text, uh Skeet right before the game, and I told him, man, take the Bucks, go out in on the plus six and a half. I think the McCaffrey – news is to get better you know to the window i don't think that he's going to be as effective as people think that he's going to be and it ended up working out well for us as we both cashed that one so this one is a no play for five star but i will probably play kenneth walker to score a touchdown uh interesting five star brings up the bucks game i was on the wrong side of that and uh one one of the reasons the 49ers failed to cover was, was special teams play and you even saw debo getting into it with the long snapper so that's obviously something they're going to have to address as well yeah, I didn't you know see that spread so did he pull a young way cool and was missing stuff and just kind of shaving the points so jake moody keeps missing <laughs> kicks so yeah. debo went over and yelled at and i, I from what he i heard he didn't say something. yeah but i don't think it was that bad it was like get your head in the game or get right it wasn't it wasn't personal or nothing uh, yeah and the long snapper tried to jump in and, and protect him but at this point special <laughs> teams is, out. is the reason this is even <laughs> close um so and, and that's been an issue with the young coaches, right? Is sometimes in Green Bay, it, it's been, and McVay has been uh, a victim of this too. They only think about offense and defense and they're leaving out special teams. And, and you know, it's been pointed out that the older coaches, you know, uh, Reed, Belichick, I mean, they, they spend a lot of times uh, on special teams. So that's going to be an issue for the 49ers uh, moving forward. But Sino, how do you approach in this game between the Seahawks and the Niners? Mike Madonna has is in trouble. Simple as that. Like the Seahawks, they started off real, real good. Then what? They lost five of the last six. Like that's not that mm -hmm. don't look right. And again, uh, McCaffrey coming back. I think they're gonna try to make some adjustments, just running the ball. You know, getting back in the game. Um, this is a big under game right here for Sino. Official play under forty eight. I'm looking at some numbers right here. Um, I'm having it around what they're saying thirty nine. Oh, that's great. And they're zero and ten against this, uh, the spread right here to the under. So we're gonna play the under. Official play for Sino under forty eight. Nothing wrong with playing an under in a divisional showdown. Um, the best game of the afternoon slate, five star Kansas City Chiefs taking on the Buffalo Bills. Bills are laying two, and uh, everyone's going to talk about Patrick Mahomes' record against the spread. 
as an underdog. So for me, uh, it's Chiefs or pass, uh, but it's not my my necessarily my favorite game to get involved with. And I, you know, um, I'm, I'm small on the Chiefs here. But do you think I should add, or do you think I'm on the wrong side? There's some two types for me. I'm gonna bet this game live after it's starting, and one of these quarterbacks get behind and try to grab about seven and a half, eight points, ten points, or something, and and wait for the other quarterback to fight back a little bit in the second half because uh, the Chiefs. They roar back every week, second half. They're a second half team. They're five one one against the spread in their past seven road games. It's a myth that people think that Kansas City is dominating Buffalo. They just won the more important games. But in the regular season, Buffalo's been pretty good against Kansas City. They've beaten them the last three times in the regular season, but they lost to them twice in the playoffs. So um, it's a good chance that Buffalo gets this one done, man, and gives the Chiefs their first loss of the year. All my numbers are saying Buffalo is really the play, but I doubt I play it because it's just against my rules. You guys know I got rules, and one of them is don't fade hey, my home. Uh -huh. I'm not betting against my home. So, I mean, I'm going to watch it, but my numbers do say Buffalo has a really good chance to win this one. Yeah, and Buffalo has actually had some success against them in the regular season. Uh, Sino, yeah. what's your approach to this one? Just exactly what Five Star said. I'd be a fool to go fade Patrick Mahomes. I'm not doing that. But everybody thinks it's going to be a high scoring game. Nope, definitely won't be. You want another official play from Sino? Under 46. Let's go. All right, 46 is the number I have offshore right now, too. And in Sunday Night Football, I can't wait to hear your thoughts on this one, Five Star, because uh, your guy, Joe Burrow. Uh, back against the wall. I mean, they're not officially eliminated, but I, in my mind, they're essentially eliminated. If Cincinnati were to lose this game, uh, they travel to Los Angeles to take on the Chargers. Um, I bet the under in this game, but I do have a little bit of a concern that the Chargers have built up all these excellent defensive metrics going against weaker competition. So, uh, you know, a little bit of buyer's remorse there, uh, but I got in at 47 and a half. Uh, Chargers are currently minus one, so it's essentially just pick the winner of this game. Who do you like by a star? The battle of the two media darlings. These are the <laughs> most overhyped quarterbacks in the history of the field. They both, they both were so loved by the NFL beat writers. But um, in this one, I, I like the coaching, the spread left. <laughs> I'll, I'll be right back. I'll be right back. <laughs> I got to talk about his boys. Y'all hit that like button. This is the waging world. Yeah, man. So in this one, I have to lean with Harbaugh. Harbaugh is finally shaping his team. Run the ball. Play good defense. You got good offense with the Bengals. Fifth in the league with 27 points per game going against great defense. The Chargers are the best. They only allow 13 points per game. I think that that defensive line is able to get into Joe Burrow's face. I also think that offensive on the offensive side of the ball, that the Chargers are able to play keep away, long drives, run the ball, uh, just be more physical at the line. I'll be playing the Chargers on this one. I think the Chargers win this game. Uh, I'm on the other side, five star. We finally got a uh, one where we, you know, our little bowl game that they like. I just think yeah, Cincinnati's so. strong run defense, uh, you know, is going to stifle the Chargers' heavy offense that they got. And again, they got to pass the ball, turnovers turnovers and that Cincinnati offense they've been limited to sacks and turnovers Jamar Chase starting to step up uh Burrow lead pass and they definitely need this win right here um I ran some numbers and stuff like that I'm saying I'm seeing that they went by a touchdown and the Chargers right here they ain't won the game in the spot all year so we definitely gonna take uh the Bengals plus one and a half mm, you're on Cincinnati huh yeah I'm on Cincinnati yeah all right all right um final game let's talk about uh <laughs> Monday Night Football is it even gonna be worth watching five star and I'm or I'm gonna be watching my NBA by uh by the second quarter here. The, the, the Dallas gonna get the doors blown off them. Uh Texans coming off that disappointing loss in prime time last week. Uh that's two tough losses in a row on prime time, and now they got a chance to kind of make things right uh, against the world. You know, if the Texans would have won that game against the Lions, I might be hesitant to lay the seven and a half, but coming off two losses. They're better in every facet of the game right now if you look at the current teams. To me, this is Texans are past. And I know seven and a half seems like a lot, but it's almost like they just need Cowboys money so bad they had to put up an attractive line for the underdog betters. What do you think? Yeah, Texas better be careful in this one, especially for the full game. First half will be on the Texas. They always come out with a good game plan. They'll probably overwhelm with talent early. 
But I don't know if that defense holds up in the second half. And the offense has to do better, man. They're ranked 31st in offensive success rate this season. Only team that's worse than them are the Browns. So I don't know what the Texans are doing over there. Once again, I said today on ESPN 975, uh, hopefully Bobby Slork was listening to the show, <laughs> to the uh, most popular you know, morning sports show in Houston. And that's the bench with uh, John Granado and Lance Sirline. I'm on there every uh, Friday morning. Uh, 7.30 a.m. Pacific Standard Time, 9.30 a.m. Central Standard Time for three years now. I'm their bidding expert. But I was saying on air, man, Bobby Slower, please come out of this silly stuff that you're running. Run the spread offense, man, so you can protect your offensive linemen. They're saying that CJ has the fifth lowest quick pass rate in the NFL. That's stupid. He's holding the ball way too long, man. Get him some easy throws. Nico Collins is back. First half on the Texans, I think they're on them early, but this is a real public game. It's going to be real political. It's going to be a standalone, so I don't know if they can catch the whole game, but I do like the Texans' first half. What do you think of Tino? Uh, I'll give you guys a little secret. The Rage and receiver, right? Tino always do this. Anytime uh, Mike McCarthy has been uh, coaching the Dallas Cowboys and they get blown out by 17 or more points, they don't cover but win the next game. It's simple as that. Um, if you guys watch how CJ Stroud played last game, he did not look like himself. Um, he was missing like wide open uh, receivers and stuff. I went back and watched some of them. Like, damn, he'd never make miss these. I guess it just was the pressure. But um, Cowboys, they want to tank. They want to tank. Cooper Rush is not that guy. Um, the season is very, very sharp for them. They know they're not going to the playoff Super Bowl. Dax out of that. He's going to get the, uh, the surgery like they said. Man, another official play from Ceno. Texans minus seven and a half. Um, this should be a blowout. They should win by two or more touchdowns. <laughs> they want you guys to take Dallas. You can be a fool and go do so if you want. All right. Seems like we all like uh, the Texans here. Uh, but five stars going to take them first half. I won't be surprised to see both. Yeah. Dallas already they signaled finished. their intentions. Hey, done. Look what the Eagles did to this team. They, the Houston Texans are about to slaughter these guys. I hope so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. About to happen. Not to mention it's an in-state rivalry. I know it's not like a traditional rivalry, uh, but that means a lot uh, to the, each fan base and the coaches are aware of this. All right, it's time for the people segment. We're going to bless you with some winners. Foster, I'll start with you. What's your favorite play for the weekend? Man, I'm going to the Great Cup. This is the 104th edition. You guys know that I love to bet different markets, and that's what makes me who I am. Five-star, man, my portfolio. We can go to all types of sports. And I have an opinion, and not only an opinion, an expert opinion on it. And I've been watching CFL football now probably about 11, 12 years, man. And I love the sport. And now it's at its culmination. It's at its Super Bowl for Canada. Um, nine and a half points is a lot of points to be giving this Toronto team, man. I think it's because Chad Kelly's out. That's their superstar quarterback. But they've been playing without him most of the year anyway. They went nine games. Um, of playing with another quarterback because Chad Kelly was on suspension for making sexual advances <laughs> at the uh, assistant coach. They had a female assistant coach and he was in there, you know, making them feel uncomfortable and get suspended by the league for nine uh, games. That's pretty much on brand for Chad Kelly. He's a real frat boy. So I don't think that they're going to miss him. They've been able to do just fine without him. He is a very explosive, good player. Um, but with that said, Winnipeg is coming into this game with the number one defense in the league. They play really tough, but they got some pressure on them to not become the Canadian Buffalo Bills. Um, they lost two straight great cups now under Mike O'Shea. Uh, they were upset by Toronto two years ago. Uh, Toronto has the most championships in the history of the CFL with 17 titles. Winnipeg, Winnipeg has the most um, appearances in the CFL great cup with 27 with all that said man that's just too many points to give up in a championship game i think the books are setting people up because the blue bombers have been dominant since the start of august they're 10 and 1 straight up 9 and 2 against the spread in the last 11. argos have nick arbuckle he's not a good quarterback but i think that defense turns over zach calaris who's the quarterback for winnipeg a couple times and they find a way to stay in this game give me plus nine and a half with toronto in the Grey Cup, you guys tune into the 104th edition, the Grey Cup in the CFL has been going longer uh, than the NFL and it was the place that a lot of African Americans uh, went to play football when they couldn't play in the NFL. So you guys tune into that one. Also, I give you guys a college football play. You know what I always say, if the line look mud, looks funny, it's probably money. So we're going to roll this week with 
once again, Illinois is in this spot. It's something that the books are seeing um, that they don't believe too much in the lie now. So we're going with Michigan State plus three on the road. I trust Jonathan Smith to get it done. Illinois is missing their running back. They're also missing their top receiver. They're also missing their best player on defense, Dylan Rosak, who got hurt um, just this past a home game against Minnesota when we faded them with Minnesota plus three. Something that the books are saying, if the books don't trust you, I don't trust you. So I'm going with Michigan State and Jonathan Smith plus three on the road to Illinois. A quick note for those out here in California, and I know we got a lot of viewers in Texas as well. Uh, if you're tailing five stars play on that CFL, you're going to find the nine and a half at Bet Online. On Bookmaker, it's already down to eight and a half. So go to Bet Online. That's I just placed it on Bet Online there, um, and I, I had to pass over Bookmaker on this one. Sino, appreciate the ball and parlay. Uh, I'm gonna run back the team I gave out on the free play the other day, uh, and I, it was a loser. I'm gonna take the Rams, man. The Rams they uh, won three of their last four games, and the Patriots lost three of their last five games. Um, LA the better team offensively. They they struggled to get in the box at home, man. Um, I don't think the Patriots are gonna be as successful offensively because the Rams they can control the run. Their defense is real, real good at that. Um, and this is the same spot the Rams were in whenever they played the Vikings and they won that game. And they run the dogs, they won. I think the Rams come right here, blow this team out, um, just how they did the Vikings, and it should be an easy win over that down the Patriots. So we're taking the Rams minus four and a half. Oh man, I was gonna I'm gonna be opposite you there, Sino. Good luck, my brother. Yeah, yeah, I like the right. papers too. I like the papers too. I got, I got to switch it up. I got to <laughs> yeah. switch it up. Good luck, you guys. All right, well, Sino's going to do this. I'll make this a raw play because, again, they're 10 and 0 in this spot. Uh, they'd be 11 and 0. So you got a free five in the bet from Sino. Rams minus four and a half. You All heard right. it right uh, there. He said yeah. the OG. The reason we opposite Sino is I, I, I think that Drake May is a little underrated by the market right now. Um, he's been excellent so far this season, and I'm just trying to catch a little value before everybody uh, catches up. So that'll be a fun one for us. And, you know, we we know the viewers all love it when we're on opposite sides, you know, so I'm sure they're all going to be chirping. You never get a you never get a, a congratulations, though. They always just chirp the loser here. <laughs> that's, that's it, right? Like when, we all, when we all won the Cardinals, we was all on the Cardinals game. Nobody yeah. came and said, oh, you... Nope. They just yeah. But well, you lose, you get a bunch so, of messages. That, that, that's what you got for us, though, Spread? All right, then I'm going to have to pivot, but it's a game we already talked about. Uh, and I'll go, I'm will go. i going with the Denver Broncos. Uh, I'm going to lay it against the Falcons outdoors. It's, it, at this time of year, we're fading a lot of dome teams outdoors, and I really like the way that Denver Broncos defense looks. I know they got housed uh, against the Ravens, but they bounce back. Uh, against the Kansas City Chiefs team, and I'm thinking this team is focused, uh, ready to go. And, and then I had already bet it, but I love what Five Star said uh, about that Atlanta connection there with Sean Payton. I actually didn't make that in my original handicap, but that just makes me like the Broncos even more. There's no way that can be a, a net negative for Denver being familiar with that organization and also uh, having some built-in hatred uh, for that organization. So uh, give me the young man, Bo Nix, going against the old man, Kirk Cousins, and I'll take the Denver Broncos minus two. All right, you heard it there. Five star, I'm giving out the Toronto Argonauts plus nine and a half as well uh, with the uh, fighting Michigan State Spartans plus three on the road against Illinois and another if the line looks funny uh, game. And then you heard Sino, he booking both his OGs. We're both taking yeah. the page that up top. <laughs> and he's going with the Rams. He said, five units, dog. So if you a Sino believer, here's your chance right here. Minus four and a half, a five unit play for my young boy. And then right here, you heard what Spread just said. Me and them both agree also on the fact that we think the Broncos dominate the Falcons on the road. Anything for the people Sino before we get out of here? Uh, nah, man, you got the ball in parlay. You got four official, official free plays somewhere up in between the other audio, man. Shout out to the wager world. Let's keep winning. We back, baby. Yes, sir. Anything for the people, Spread? Yeah, NBA Cup action tonight. Just a quick uh, word of wisdom there. Um, these totals are going to seem a little inflated, when, and you're going to want to play a lot of uh, unders. But remember, in the NBA Cup, point differential is a tie break, and then points scored is a tie break. So a lot of times these games are higher scoring uh, than we project. Just something to keep in mind for the people as they're betting the NBA Cup. And those games will be every Tuesday and Friday uh, for the next three weeks. As always, great words of wisdom from the OG of the show. Great handicapper, man. The spread. Hey, guys, we appreciate you for tuning in another week. Don, you guys hit that like button. It's week 12, college football. That's almost a wrap. We're about to get into bowl season soon. 
And uh, week 11 on the NFL, it happened so fast. So that means stack your bankroll while the getting is good. Hey, man, if you know, you know. That's what this show is all about, man. You guys have to tell the people, tell your squad, let them know that if they want to win some money, come over here. It's if you know, you know. You know you're going to win with the way the world because it's always for you guys. It's us versus the machine. Hit that like button, as I said. Subscribe, tell your friends, subscribe. I dedicate this show as always to my father, the greatest Houston sports fan that I know, and that's John H. Lindsay. We'll see you guys next week. This is The Waging World.